Welcome back, Yadamoose here, and today I wanted to talk about two precision weapons that I personally have come to really enjoy, and have seen many divers rocking. Of course, talking about the Scorcher and the Slugger. I wanted to compare these two as they have become a massive tool in my armory, and I wanted to see which was ultimately the better precision weapon. To start, we have the Scorcher, acquired from the original Free War Bond for 75 medals on page 10. Then we have the Slugger, that you can actually get a bit before this in the Free Bond as well, on page 8 for 60 medals. So they're pretty close in cost. Now let's see how they perform. Firstly, I wanted to talk about the Slugger, as this was originally a diamond in the rough for most, as the Breaker was and still is most people's primary of choice. However, I wanted to shine a bit of light on this primary, as it has incredible stun potential. Recently, this got a buff to have 60 total ammo instead of the 40, which is quite a decent upgrade. It also refills all the ammo with one supply pickup now as well, which is incredible and makes this even better. There is no options to change anything here, so when you hold the reload button, there is nothing you can alter on this weapon, and it doesn't come with a flashlight, which I thought was a bit strange, but not the biggest issue really, just more of a minor thing. As far as dealing with enemies, we tested this on Helldive rank 9, to really give you an idea of how this performs. And it can one-shot most of the small trash, it one-shots hunters as well, if you can land a solid hit. This can also take out brood commanders in two shots to the head, which will make them bleed out over a couple of seconds, which is great alongside it stunning them so they can't rush you before they go down. This does take a few good shots to the face of Biospewers, which means you are going to have to get into that dangerous line of fire, but the stun, if you can time it properly, will prevent them from spewing at you entirely. So with some good practice, you can take these guys out with ever, without ever getting sniped. Another thing, as far as the stalkers go, these guys are usually on your butt and always hitting you. This stagger with this weapon will make that stop, and you can stop these guys just completely dead in their tracks. It is incredible and it will make sure that these guys never fling you across the map again. Another target this can take out is the Hive Guards, and it penetrates their front armor, which is medium armor, so you don't have to juke them out just to take out their exposed weakness on the side and back, which is great, as those can cause a major issue in a pack without the ability to punch through them. The new Shrieker is a bit rough with this, since this is a precision weapon, taking these things down is going to be a very difficult task while moving or getting attacked by other mobs. Your accuracy will sway quite a bit, if you can stand still and get that steady shot, this will be done easier, but they do also move quite fast, so it's definitely going to require a bit of aiming to take these guys out. One thing you don't have to worry about with this weapon is premature loading, as you can load each shell individually, making it so there is never a wasted shot besides the ones you might miss. I don't have a good habit of doing this personally, but something you can make as far as this weapon to stay topped off is getting into the habit of reloading after each shot, or after every couple of shots, as you can stay topped up without having to spend a lot of downtime reloading like most other weapons, which makes this very effective at staying ready for any threat that may come your way. This does also mean you're going to be burning through ammo quite a bit faster if you are fighting hordes of bugs or bots, so I would suggest picking your fights carefully where possible. The shotgun has pretty great range since there is no box shot, so you don't have to worry about the damage spreading out all over, you can aim for targets quite far and still pack quite a punch with some accuracy. I wouldn't recommend taking out objectives with this weapon like Spore Spheres, as it will take quite a few shots, and there is downtime in between each shot, so I'd recommend you use a support weapon or grenades on those at least with the Slugger. On Automaton's side, this thing can stun just as well here. It's a bit harder to deal with some targets like the Scout Strider enemy, which has medium armor in the front. This cannot be penetrated by this weapon, so you will have to still go around those guys and actually take them out from the sides or back, or maybe even get higher ground and pop the top off if you get a lucky angle. That can work quite as well, but you do have to get an angle for that, so not as viable. Rocket and Heavy Devastators can be stun locked with this weapon, and in a couple of shots you can take out their heads so long as you're accurate, which is great, as they both have way too much fire to be left unattended, and get a lucky shot on you when you're attempting to take them out. You can take out the vents on backs of cannons, as well as hulks, but again, with the in-between shot time for this weapon, I would really say that using grenades, stratagems, or a support weapon is going to make your life a whole lot easier here. Again, this weapon is something you can get earlier than the Scorcher and packs quite a punch, so this is one that I would highly recommend picking up and testing for yourself, as the stagger and punch on this weapon is absolutely incredible, and I was able to get through many missions on Helldive difficulty much easier with this at my side. Up next is the Scorcher. This is one that I was really hyped for when I got it and I was not disappointed. It can pack quite a punch, as well as having explosive damage which comes in handy with many different things in this game. Much like the Slugger, this weapon has a similar option of adjustments with this having a flashlight whereas the Slugger does not, but otherwise there really isn't much else to customize here either. This also comes with 15 shots per mag and you get 6 total mags with max ammo for a total of 90 shots, 
which is more than the Slugger total, but the Slugger does pack a bigger punch on some of the heavier targets like Brood Commanders, so that is where you're going to see the difference, and that 30 isn't going to be the biggest difference between those two weapons. One thing right off the bat that really hurts this weapon, and why some don't like using it, is the self-damage. If you use this at point-blank range, you can actually damage yourself, and if it's close enough, it will one-shot you while the thing you hit gets off with almost no damage. This means that it will require some control of the trigger, as well as better positioning than the Slugger, which on bugs is a bit harder to do since they tend to swarm you, but with some decent practice, it can almost entirely be mitigated. For bugs specifically, I really like that you can bypass medium armor on hive guards with this weapon, as it makes that much easier to deal with those enemies without having to worry about going around them, or taking out the undersection where they aren't in guard position. It does take quite a few more shots, as mentioned before on Brood Commanders, so you are going to want to be more accurate here where possible to save yourself some ammo, as it will add up with some misplaced shots. Otherwise, this thing can mostly take out trash mobs as well with one well-placed shot. Hunters are a bit iffy with that, as you do have to get a good hit on the head to take them out, so it's a bit worse in that way. But with missions like egg clusters, this weapon is going to shine, as you can pop a shot off, and this will take out groups of these eggs with every shot, making it so you don't have to waste a stratagem or grenades on these objectives, and can take them out using your primary weapon, which is very easily refilled with resupplies or ammo caches around the map. Something I mentioned in a previous video is this weapon is actually incredible at taking out spore spears. You can take them out in about 4-5 to five good shots from any distance, which is very few, honestly, considering how much this actually has. This is one of the few things about this that I personally like most, as it's quite satisfying to see those go down so easily. I know that that may not matter to some, but definitely something I wanted to point out. This weapon doesn't have any special mechanism on it that allows it to get a faster reload, so if you do reload with some ammo still in the magazine, you can't utilize that to cut down on reload time, and it's around like two and a half seconds roughly to actually reload this, so that is one advantage that the Slugger definitely has over this. For the Automatons, this can bypass the medium armor on the Scout Striders, unlike the Slugger, so you don't actually have to run around them, and you can just aim at the faceplate, and a couple of shots will take them out. I have noticed that aiming higher seems to take less shots since that is where their head is, so I would try to aim a bit higher if you can to save some ammo. For the Rocket and Heavy Devastators, this will not stun them whatsoever, which makes it harder to deal with them. You can take them out as well with about 3-5 to five shots depending on your angle, and if you're able to get a good shot on the head or not. This will of course be harder while you are getting sprayed by a constant rain of either rockets or laser bullets, so the Slugger can make this a bit easier if these are enemies that you struggle with on the bot side of things. This also has an easier time with events on things like cannons and tanks, as the explosive damage makes it easier to hit those, even at awkward angles. I would still suggest using something else to take those things out, but that is something where this weapon can excel a bit more at over the slugger. After using this weapon for some time, I have gotten used to the self-damage, but I still find it really hard to manage when in a big swarm of hunters, while being slowed, as you don't have a lot of options, and with a secondary and a support weapon swapping between these is kind of a hassle sometimes. This is more of a controller issue, as you can just use the number keys on the keyboard and mouse to not really have that issue, but I like playing on controller for these types of games, so it does make it a bit harder when using this for me personally, but most using the keyboard and mouse won't really struggle with that too much. For both of these weapons, I really enjoy using them both. I would say that you're going to get a bit more use out of the Scorcher when faced with automatons when it comes to events and bypassing the Strider armor, while the Slugger is going to get better use to stun things like Stalkers, Brood Commanders, as well as Bile Spears to make those enemies much easier to deal with. They definitely both have their positives, but I think for me, uh, as I've used both of these weapons for quite some hours now, I have to say that the Slugger has taken the spot for my more used weapon on both factions at the moment, but the Scorcher still comes in quite close, as it can make short work of Spore Spears, as well as Egg Missions with ease, and it's actually a pretty good weapon in my opinion. We will have to see how both of these stack up against our new foe that is coming out soon, being the Illuminates, as we don't know what kind of tricks or challenges that they may bring, so that is something to look into once that is out. I hope you found some use from this video overall with each of these weapons, and my take on which is the better precision weapon. If you like this video, consider subscribing, as it helps me out quite a bit, and we are going to be posting other content like Dragon's Dogma 2 as well when that comes out. So, if you're interested in that, be sure to have the notifications on for those videos, as those will be up very shortly. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.